Wasp well, speaker. <laughs> Yeah, good, I got yeah. this. Please join me for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the August 31st, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. We're going to start with oath of office. Num number, please join us. Sir, thank you very much for allowing us the, the opportunity to come before you again with the promotions. Uh, we're extreme, uh, extremely happy tonight to be promoting two positions, and we welcome the family. Family, if you could join in. Are they coming in? Okay. <laughs> this is an active Board of Selectmen meeting tonight. So what I will ask is that we're going to do the promotional ceremonies, congratulations following, and then we'll all exit. And I do believe that there's a plan in place for that too. Is that true? I bet there is. Okay. <laughs> Tonight we're promoting two positions within the fire department. These two positions are extremely important, and they are captain and lieutenant. Both are company officers. Lieutenant's position is a true company officer. They work on an engine, they work with a crew. They get dirty, and they are responsible for everything that happens to that engine company. They hear all the complaints and all the gripes, and they do a lot of work. The captains also get dirty, a little less so. Their job is shift commander, so it's a little bit larger. They have a much bigger scope, and tonight we have the fine opportunity to promote two excellent individuals who have tested exceedingly well and shown their mettle. They've given to this department for a very long time. The first is Captain Michael McMahon. as a called firefighter in 1994. He joined the service full-time in 1996 and was promoted to lieutenant in 2006. He's responsible for purchasing all of our small tools and we keep him very busy doing so. He's also responsible for everything that goes on the engines, hose, everything like that. Um, he's gonna retain that duty as he moves into his captain's position and he's gonna be taking over on group one beginning at 8 a.m. Right. So, without further ado, Captain Command, you'll join me. From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Michael McMahon of Hampton, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham, whereas there is a vacancy in the office of fire captain in said town, and whereas we, the subscribers, have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Michael McMahon as fire captain of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers to perform the duties and be subject to the liabilities of, of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 31st day of August 2015, Fred Welch, town manager. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Michael McMahon. I, Michael McMahon. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As fire captain. As fire captain. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Captain McMahon was also one of our paramedics there. and yeah, one Mike. of our uh, one of the core paramedics. He's, he was one of the original guys in the service. We're extremely happy to promote him tonight, and very glad for that. And tonight we have Jen McMahon, who's going to be coming up to do the honors of pinning on. Girls, would like to come up, Yeah, band aids on here. <laughs> <laughs> So with the promotion of a captain comes a vacant position. 
and that vacant position is a lieutenant. Tonight, we'll be promoting firefighter Sean Murray to the position of lieutenant. Sean Murray started as an uh, explorer with Hampton Fire in 1987. Uh, couple of years ago and then he moved on to uh, Northampton for a short time and then saw the light came back he started with us again I believe if uh, memory serves Sean that was 1994 is that right 95 95 thank you 94 is up there 95 is here um, he's been serving us since uh, he's been doing a lot of work on the outside on preparing for this role and he's going to be taking over as the lieutenant on group three on Saturday morning Lieutenant, Mc um, Lieutenant Murray please <laughs> From the town of Hampton in the county of Rockingham to Sean Murray of Hampton, New Hampshire in the county of Rockingham. Whereas there is a vacancy in the office of fire lieutenant in said town, and whereas we the subscribers have confidence in your ability and integrity to perform the duties of said office, we do hereby appoint you the said Sean Murray as fire lieutenant of said town. And upon your taking the oath of office and having this appointment and the certificate of said oath of office recorded by the town clerk, you shall have the powers to perform the duties and be subject to the liabilities of such office until another person shall be chosen and qualified in your stead. Given under my hand this 31st day of August 2015, Fred Welch, town manager. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Sean Murray. I, Sean Murray. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and perform. Discharge and perform. All the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me. As fire lieutenant. As fire lieutenant. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Agreeably to the rules and regulations. Of this constitution. Of this constitution. And the laws of the state of New Hampshire. Of the state of New Hampshire. Laws so, of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. <laughs> so help me God. <laughs> Seven that he was in the firehouse because when he was about the age of his own children, he was uh, hanging around the firehouse back then. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 We're certainly honored tonight, too, because we're joined by Mike McMahon, former employee of Hampton Park. I'm sorry, I keep doing this. <laughs> I apologize. This is no offense. Um, by Mike Murray, who is uh, also a former employee, right? Fire alarm operator who worked with Hampton for a long time. Tonight, we're going to ask um, Kristen Murray to come up and pin Sean on. our ceremony tonight we thank you all very much I do believe that uh, there's going to be a small soiree over at 401 I did see Desi in the room so that usually indicates something we certainly do appreciate the leave of the Board of Selectmen and Mr. Chairman we appreciate your time Mr. Town Manager thank you all very much thank you I know <laughs>
I've seen the contract. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that was a big, it's always a big deal the first time that happens. Thank you. No question. How are you, Mr. Manager? Very good, sir. And you, Chief? Never better. Well, there you go. See? Say hello to Charlotte. Tell her we're saying hi. All right. Hey, tell Charlotte we're saying hi, you know. Yeah, I will. All right. Grass is in the right place. That's all it counts. That's a good sign. Love you, man. Thank you. can make it for breakfast, I'll call them up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was nice to see Mr. Murray. <laughs> nice to see Mr. Murray yeah, as he well. Considers me. Bless his heart. Oh, thank you. Well, well, it's good to see him. It's no. nice. Okay. Yeah, their whole family's here. We're losing our whole audience. <laughs> very sad. Yeah. I could have somebody out there close and lock the doors when there are extra people left. <laughs> <laughs> Need, we have a quorum. <laughs> Had one in Seabrook when I first arrived. But day of the uh, mongoose. <laughs> oh, jeez. Thank you. I'll have Sean Next, we move on to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A public hearing for acquisition of land at Harris Avenue and Fellows Avenue. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, um, there was a number of years ago a subdivision at this location at the corners of uh, Harris Avenue and Fellows Avenue, uh, which actually don't really touch. I've sent the board some photos of that particular location. Uh, this is to accept a piece of land that was a requirement of the subdivision for the um, marina. Uh, the land is very small, as you've seen from the information that I've given to you. It's less than an acre. It completes that portion of Harris Avenue to connect directly to Fellows Avenue. Uh, the town also owns a very small piece of land, <coughs> which is 0 0.07 acres uh, and completes that piece, that little triangle. Um, this is a, re a requirement under 4714A to, to go through this process in order to accept land. If the board decides at the end of this process there are two public hearings to discuss it, the third public hearing is for the board to consider and vote on it. Uh, if, if it survives to the end of the public hearing process, then uh, the next step, once that's the deed is recorded is to start the process for acceptance of a public way, which requires a different type and series of hearings with certain types of notices uh, to abutters and to others uh, in accordance with the statute. I will make note, because he's not here, that Mr. Moody did uh, raise a, uh, an issue with regards to that, a single page typed um, dissertation regarding the acceptance of a public way. This is not a, the acceptance of a public way yet. <coughs> However, uh, in, 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 uh, in due diligence to what he has indicated, uh, we will be, uh, should this land be accepted, move into a RSA 231 uh, acceptance of a public way under the statute with proper notice, and that probably will not be for at least two months, okay. perhaps longer. So that is the process of why we are here tonight, sir. In two weeks, uh, you will have an additional public hearing to see if anyone has any facts they wish to convey to the board regarding this small little sliver of triangular sliver of land uh, which completes these two streets uh, and then two weeks following that you'll have an opportunity for the board to consider voting on it and maybe accepting the piece of land uh. it is a requirement of the subdivision so I'll make the note that should the town decide not to accept this piece of land um, then the parties may have to come back to rehearing on the subdivision so just just so we're all square in where we are I think I think that won't happen but uh, because this will complete and make the, the road whole and we'll be off of private property as far as um, uh, the connection between fellow and Harris this will give them their property back that that passageway has been there for many years and is dedicated now to public use that will be forfeited 
should the road be accepted. And that's it, sir. Okay, anyone from the public wishing to speak? Seeing now, we'll move back to the board. Mr. Waddell. Set. All set. This is. Yeah, who, I just want to clarify for it. Who owns the land now? The marina. The marina owns Correct. that land. It okay. was uh, giving it to the town. We have the deed. The <laughs> deed's already made out to the town. It was a requirement of their subdivision, um, which vested them with what is now vested authority to build condominiums on that site uh, to deed this property to the town. There was a deed that was found in the, um, the planning office yeah. in one of the files, and that's what we're acting on at this point. It's been reviewed by council, and we're ready to uh, move forward should the board decide to accept the property. So this would facilitate the requirements for building the condominium complex yes because adequate space would be needed has uh, um, public works or fire addressed the width of the road the width of the road actually will be the widest road in the beach well I don't side street there's uh, I've had the fire department examine it uh, and there's there's no inadequacy in the layout of the road should it be laid out so if it's laid out, it would be what, 30 feet, 40 feet, uh, 50 feet? Do we I, know? Until I do the actual engineering, I, I'm not going to tell you okay. because I don't want to be off by three tenths of a foot or something. Because there seems to be a question in Mr. Moody's um, testimony. As, will this be entered into the record, by the way, since he's not here publicly for the hearing? It, but it can be. That's certainly part I, I of the suggest question. that we enter that into the record. Thank uh, you. There has to be a, uh, a drawn plan in order to uh, get to the point of accepting a right. roadway. Okay. And we're not there yet. But for purposes of the public hearing, I think it would be appropriate right. to insert that in the record. <clears throat> Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So the public hearing was opened at what time? Uh, at quarter after. Okay. And it's now 20 after. And we closed it. So moving on to public comment any public comment out there seeing none we'll move to announcements the community calendar mr waddell yes uh, i just like to just very quickly say that this was impressive having uh, the swearing in of the two new officers and i'd like to you know congratulate both the fire department and the police department we've had a very busy summer down at the beach very busy summer here in <clears> town <throat> And we hear very few complaints, and they've done an excellent professional job. And I think we have a, a well-respected police and fire department, and all the citizens of the town should be proud of them. Also, one other thing that I have. Our Recreation and Parks Director, Diana Martin, just last week completed Director's School in Wheeling, West Virginia. This is a two-year school that focuses on <coughs> management, legal issues, administrative operations, strategic planning, and leadership. The school is sponsored by the National Recreation and Parks Association, North Carolina State University, and the Ogle Bay Training Center. What? And she's completed that last year. I, it was a full scholarship that she had, and this year it was a half scholarship that she had. So we should be proud of her for doing that. Mr. Friedel. Yes, well, congratulations to Diana. And uh, so I, with, with, the, uh, with the two gentlemen that were promoted, I've known both of those individuals for all their career at the Hampton Fire Department and a lot of their lives growing up. Uh, both men are extremely dedicated to this town, uh, to that department, and to their families, and I'm very proud of both of them. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. I'm sure we all are. That It's always wonderful to have them in here to be sworn in. Um, I had calls from Place Cove over the weekend. There was a dead seal on the beach on Saturday. Uh, some official, and I have no idea who it was, I guess was taking samples to see if the seal was diseased and whatever, and she told the, the residents not to touch it or not to go near it. But the dead seal was still there this morning, so I had a call from a resident asking, when is someone going to come and do something about it? So I said, well, I'm not sure who uh, you should call, so why don't you call the police department and ask them? They probably know. I did leave a message. For Jamie Sullivan as well saying help you know what do we do uh, in the meantime the lady uh, the lady called the police department and they said they didn't know they recommended that she call the New England Aquarium which she wasn't about to do long distance but she did do some extra checking and was referred to Rye and Rye said that the appropriate parties to take care of dead seals on the beach are the seacoast wildlife individuals and their phone is 997 
9448. I hope that's passed on to the police department or whoever is appropriate because if we get other calls for dead seals on the beach, we ought to be able to, uh, to respond or to get help uh, as soon as possible. That, that can be a health hazard. Now, 9979448. And I hope we don't have too many because I feel badly for the poor seals. And I would like to uh, remind everyone that the Hampton Historical Society is having the um, pig roast, pig roast uh, this Saturday. I believe it's 12 o'clock to 2.30. <laughs> and it's always a big event. It's always a lot of fun. And uh, the people work hard. And it's one of the big ways that they make the money that they need to offer the wonderful service that they do to the town. So hope everyone can come. There's plenty of tickets available. So anyone that wants one, get in touch with Rusty. <laughs> or me, myself, <laughs> or Betty Moore, or over at the Historical Society. Anyone will be glad to help. And Morelli's, they can also Morelli's. get Morelli's and uh, the various and number the spots. sooner the better because they're gonna make sure there's plenty of pig there. So please. It's a good time, had by all. Yeah. And um, next, we move to the consent agenda. I have a question for you. Number one is letter of credit for 44 and 50 Timber Swamp Road. Two is permit to use town property. Three is entertainment license. Four is seafood festival sidewalk vendors. There's four of them. I'll make a motion we accept the consent agenda. I'll second. Any comments? I just have a quick question. The Colonial Circle um, public block party, Fred, was that, did we approve that at a last meeting? I just don't remember. No, I have it on my report. Okay, so do you need us to vote on that as well? Uh, that, would, that would be wonderful Go because ahead. I'm going to bring it up and ask you to do that. Anyway, Add it so. to the consent agenda now? Yes. Would sure, you mind Absolutely. doing that? Nope. Um, you want me to just read it? If we can, Please. If we can put that down as number five. Um, this is going to be a block party uh, uh, approval for a public gathering on Colonial Circle for a block party on August uh, 26th. Right. Wait a minute. Date of event, September 20th. I found it. And uh, I, ho I have to congratulate our administrative assistant because she has added no open burning allowed. We found out there were some fire pits being used in block parties, and I appreciate that. So if we may add that as number five, I'm happy to uh, vote on the consent agenda. That's fine. All those in favor, unanimous. Moving on to appointments. Christy Pulliam, please join us at the table. Hello. Good evening. How's it going? Good. <laughs> you look very summery. Thanks. Summer's almost over, though. Huh? I know. I'm Shh. sad. Behold. <laughs> I'm avoiding that topic. Um, so I'm here tonight with the July monthly financials. You guys should have received them back at the beginning of August. Um, it's the seventh report for 2015, and the expenditure target is 58.33%. The month's total income was 675,000. Motor vehicles came in at 254,000, which is 24,000 above the month's target. Other major contributor contributors were interest on taxes at 20,000, building permits at 34,000, departmental income at 72,000, the rice sewer agreement at 22,000, parking lots at 181,000 and the real estate trust at 73,000. Uh, the expense summary, uh, including purchase orders, but without debt service is at 58.28% of the budget, which is only $12,000 over the month's target. Some of the departments of note um, under the board of selectmen and town managers, supplies and expense line are running over target. Trustees of the trust funds, their supplies and expense line is running over target. Um, in election administration, some accounts to note are repairs and maintenance, and under voter registration, supplies and expenses. Finance, supplies and expenses is over the target. Uh, most of that's related to the cost of the town reports. So 
those are absorbed at the beginning of the year. In assessing contracted services is over budget by 39,000. Um, and motor vehicle reimbursement is over the target. Tax collection, the tax liens and instruments is over target. MIS, the four equipment related accounts, when combined together, are at 55.5%, which is uh, $2,000 under budget. Planning board contra contracted services and dues is over target. And this department as a whole is now within the target. Last month they were over, so they have uh, come back within the month's target range. General government buildings, heating fuel is 75% spent. Cemeteries, con contracted services, and electric are both over target. Parking and administration, some accounts to note are water and supplies and expenses. The police department is at 54%, 54.5% overall when the open purchase orders are included. Some accounts to note are under administration, uh, computer supplies and expenses, and replacement equipment under crime control and investigation, training and recruitment, under traffic control and patrol, overtime wages, rentals and leases, vehicle maintenance, and intoxilizer, and under support services, summer coverage for full-time, uh, vacation wages, radio maintenance, supplies and expenses, and under police stations and building, the OT wages and the heating fuel. The fire department is at 55.9% overall when you include, include the open purchase orders. Under fire suppression, uh, the OT wages are over. Under communications, rentals and leases, and under fire stations and buildings is electric, water, and heating fuel. Other safety services, hydrants are now at 96.68. Uh, that's one of those ones that we make semi-annual payments, so we've made both of the payments uh, for the hydrants for 2015. Uh, highways and streets is over target at 76.3%. This continues to be the case from the snow removal earlier on in the year. It's still at 305%. Uh, other accounts to note under highways and streets is administration, OT wages, rentals and leases, and supplies and expenses. And then diesel fuel and vehicle maintenance. Under cleaning and maintenance is hired equipment um, from summer. Also under public works and municipal sanitation is running below the target at 54.9% and some accounts to note in this section are under administration, um, electric, hired equipment summer, diesel fuel. Under solid waste collection is OT wages and vehicle maintenance. Under landfill operations is groundwater monitoring and under transfer station is OT wages, heating fuel, supplies and expenses and screening and grinding. And let's see, under sewer treatment, the electric, the Exeter sewer agreement is over, but this is related to the annual payment being made there too, just a one-time payment. Animal control is running below target, but the OT wages are at 101%. Culture and recreation, some accounts to know here are under administration, the OT wages and the telephone, and under maintenance of parks is heating fuel. The Warren articles, um, the 2014 encumbrances are showing at 59% expended to date, and we're still working to clear out those purchase orders. In this um, fund 24, the recreation, the beach sticker donations year to date equals $11,599, with $21,477 being uh, granted in scholarships for kids to go to camp or do other programs. Cable committee, the fund balance continues to run slightly above the 2014 ending balance. Private detail, uh, Fund 26, the activity level in this account has increased now that we are in the summer season. And Fund 27, EMS, uh, they're still making their uh, monthly payments on the new defibrillators from that account. And then the wastewater system development charge, uh, there were no fees collected in July. Uh, the balance was 150000 and the board did vote to expend funds from this account at their meeting on June 27th. So after those funds were expended, it brings that uh, down to $107,000. Also, today in your mailboxes, I put um, a little summary that I had uh, worked up today in regards to year-end uh, predictions. They're only estimates right now. I will not swear by any of them, but they're based on what we are, have currently spent through the end of July. Um, August is just now ending today, so we'll probably hopefully have those numbers by the end of next week for you guys. 
but um, right now we're looking to barely come out at the end of the year. $155,000 um, is my predicted year in savings at this point, which is only 0.67% of the $23 million, $26 million budget. So that's very, very close. Um, so that's what I have for you guys tonight. Good news. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Bridal. Yeah. Um, as far as the figures, I mean, they are what they are. <laughs> Could you, uh, for, for the public, could you equate that 155000 You know, some people may think that's a lot of money, but for their own personal budget, if that was their household budget and that was their, their, their money on their house, how would that reflect as somebody's? Well, just like if you bring it down to like, I mean, your household budget probably wouldn't be 100000 but just to use round numbers, that would be like having a savings of only 670 dollars at the year end out of the hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars I mean it's a very small amount right, 670 and that's so when you get that that notice that your insurance is going up 10 percent or your right. or your, you know your uh, your, your water heater goes or, a big or your snow furnace storm. goes you know it this although you know hundred fifty five thousand dollars is not small change on, on a small scale on, on a large scale it's it makes very, me sweat it, and Fred it's very 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 <laughs> tight and I just want people to realize that when they when you say 155, that doesn't. You know. Right. Last year, I think in the end, I think we were right around the 300 mark, and we were sweating it last year. Right. So when I look at 155, I definitely. Well, Rusty, if your household budget is 100,000, you're living large. Absolutely. I know. I was just so trying to give a big. So if it's 50,000, that's only 300 dollars that's yeah. left. Or 100 dollars. So, you know, or, uh, you're right. talking like so, 67 cents or whatever. So, so I mean, it's it's a lot of money. That's. You know, right. or it's a little bit of money. It's not a lot, yeah. That's it right. sounds like it's a lot of money, but when you're looking at the twenty-six million dollar budget, one hundred and fifty-five is pretty close. That's and right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, M Mrs. Wilson. Well, this is kind of where the uh, difference in the appropriations between twenty fourteen and twenty fifteen went, because you may remember last week I mentioned that there was an additional one hundred and seventy-eight thousand in the twenty fifteen budget, vis-a-vis -vis the twenty fourteen budget. So it looks like this is kind of the remnants of the little extra that we got. Um, Christy, mm -hmm. on the bottom of your page, the uh, POs, mm -hmm. and you know I get excited having stuff held over. On the bottom, uh, say December 9 back to December 5th, is that all debt service? It looks to me like debt service amounts. <coughs> Otherwise, I don't see why we'd have open POs that back that far. I think I just copied that over from what Mike was doing. I think he was just showing everyone what the open purchase orders were at the end of those years. You can't possibly have open purchase orders. And Warren like articles that. is my guess. So that's just a copy over from what well, was already there. Well, it shows Warren articles on the top, mm -hmm. 14, 13, 12, right. 11, 10. But I want to know that 09 back through 05 because that's a lot of money. And we know that there's nothing open now for anything beyond 14. Um, there yeah. might be some uh, Warren articles. There might be one or so that goes back to 12. Well, it should say Warren but article on it. If it's a continuing Warren article, I don't have a problem. There's no with Warren that. articles back. Okay. Any, but, I think 12 is the oldest. Yeah. But I want to know, like 12 I wanna the know why those figures are there. When you have a minute, you don't okay. have to think about it now. And on page 5 of 16, uh, Muni Insurance, the second one down, the 41969 Health Insurance. It shows a million two sixteen five fifty four available. Does that line account for the savings that we got in the uh, health trust insurance, or are there still bills coming in on that that section? It's, that would make the a savings. If if we've received, we I think we had because I thought two hundred and seventy something so far this year, and that's under revenue. We can't put it back in the expense line. No, 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 but I'm oh. saying, do we still owe? Is that 1,200 bucks going to be eaten up between now and the, I don't know if there's another billing coming in from the health trust. Oh, we I'm get saying. billed monthly to answer the question to that. Okay, so we'll see, because I just didn't think to compare it to the end of June. Okay. So we'll see that drawn down. Yes. Okay, so it's 53.8585% expended. Right. If okay. you do out the, um, if you annualize that, you come out to 2433372 Okay. So just less than a 
Okay. Just over a hundred thousand less than what was budgeted. Okay. So I appreciate and that's that. annualizing, but you can't. Thank you very much. So if I can just figure out what happened on those POs in the bottom, I'll be happy. Okay. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no questions on your numbers. We know the we know uh, we're on ether and it's uh, lean, and that's what the uh, the folks voted for uh, at election. Uh, and just uh, switching gears a bit, uh, we had talked um, with the uh, trust fund folks. Uh, there's a request for information out to uh, Mr. Silberdick, is that correct? Yes, I didn't and, bring that uh, down, but yes, it went out on Friday, I believe. If you had a reply from him yet? No. Okay. Uh, and I would, uh, I would like to stay on that. Last week was, uh, um, was bloody in the market. We have $19 million, and uh, the sooner you can get that information. Yeah, to, uh, that went out Friday afternoon, so I can follow up with them. What our, uh, what our fund values are today um, at the last day of August, that would be great. Thank I would you. I have added in the request. Thank you very much. So. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice report. Thank you. Figures are what they are, they, everybody said. But on revenue side, yes. do you feel comfortable with our revenue side on how things are coming in? Yeah, I just point? actually did the estimated revenues um, for DRA. I was working on those. And um, the revenue budget, I believe, our estimated budget for revenue was like 6897 And I think when I just redid it, I was at like seven million and three something so a little bit like a hundred or two hundred or so over what we had predicted so that's good okay and from the aspect of the state having not passed a budget and continuing under a continuing resolution <laughs> I know I was reading something about that 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 at one point I thought somebody said that it could affect the tax rates it could affect what the towns get back and then somebody else said it hadn't it wasn't going to affect the tax rate it wasn't going to affect the revenue of the town was going to get back. Have you had correspondence with the state, or are they keeping up with what's going on? I think the on? judge's ruling is not out on that yet, but we did, Fred and I, or I received and I shared it with Fred from DRA, saying something to the effect that they only had the six-month budget right now, so they were still in the process of deciding how they were going to handle that when it became time to set the tax rates, whether they were going to double the six-month budget or go back to what the previous year's budget was, I believe, is what they were looking at as options. Um, but I haven't heard any ruling on that over the past week. I think I got that about a week and a half ago or so, so I haven't heard anything recently on that. So, so that's something that... The, but it could affect... Yeah, that's something yeah. we should be aware of and that the town should be aware of, that it could have an effect on... Right, and I can get you a copy of that letter if you haven't yeah, received it yeah, yet. Which I think is DRA. important. And the other question I had is on a lot of these departments, the heating yes. part, the heating section was over budget yeah. by a considerable amount. We still have coming into the cold months to finish up the year. Right. How, how are we feeling about that? I was started to do that analysis right before I left today, and I didn't get it through it. So once I finished that, I was doing gas, diesel, and heating, mm -hmm. and electric. I was doing all of those generic kind of accounts that go across so as soon as I um, complete that analysis I will share it with right. you guys but but um, something we should be aware of I guess and the town should be aware of is that we're coming into cold months yes we're already way up on the heating part sections and also we're coming into months where we could still have more snow again before right. this budget's complete right. so it's another thing that we have to be aware of and have to keep our eyes open for right. and not every line item but uh, the majority of the line items that I just read off to you even as boring as it was to many were almost all related to having a default budget honestly it was all OT wages heating electric all of those accounts that don't that default to the prior year right so if people would stop buying that almanac we wouldn't be in this trouble <laughs> What people should be aware of also is that if, if there's one part that's over, we've got to take it from another part, Correct. right? Yeah. So it, 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 things have to balance Save out the in the line. end. Yeah. So it's not like there's extra money that we can get and just say, boom, here we got this. Right. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully we won't have any bad weather and everything will Until be Until after January 1st, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank no you. problem. Thank you. Well, have a nice evening this Thanks, evening. Thank you, too. Next, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Walsh. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, a couple of things in addition to the report, and I'll start off with those. Uh, I received a plethora of communications from Hampton Falls and, and from uh, um, our good senator uh, and DOT. And you'll remember the request for a turnaround where they're doing the yes. construction out yes. there. And we realize that won't happen for a couple of years because the construction is going to take till 2018 to finish. DOT has promised that they will put that turnaround in, which I think is a a monumental thing so 
Uh, that will give both Hampton Falls and Hampton uh, the ability to turn vehicles around, emergency vehicles and responses out there. So that's, that's valuable to us and to them as well. Um, I received a <coughs> request from uh, CASA, uh, CASA um, which is the uh, Court Appointed Specialists uh, and Advocates for Children. Uh, requesting that we appropriate five hundred dollars to them, they are not on our list of of uh, organizations to donate to. In the past, the board's position has been that we get one that's not currently on the list that they have to petition in order to get on the list. And uh, given the fact that there was a few changes that you made last year, I just want to make sure that that's in fact what we're still doing. I would because I'm prepared that. to send them a letter saying you need to petition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I didn't hear I would, anything of the contract. I would say yeah, absolutely yes. It make sure that they get a hold of. I, I know CASA does a lot of good work to, as do. the victims' advocates and and stuff for children that, that are in the court yeah. system. Uh, and I'm sure they have plenty of uh, both professional friends and and people that have been serviced by them that could do that. Uh, uh, could easily get a warrant article. So. Well, I, I don't think there's any question about that. They did, uh, just in Hampton alone, Rockingham County alone, they did 159 uh, children served, uh, 82 volunteers, 58,000 miles traveled, and 7,300 7, hours of volunteer service for children uh, just in Rockingham County. So we're part of that process, and, and I think it's a valuable process for us. Absolutely. It takes away part of our responsibility to appropriate funds for police and welfare and some of the other services that we give. So, <clears throat> all right, I'll make sure that that goes out and, and if they have a problem to get in touch with me. Um, we also received a, a letter from Preston Real Estate, from Bob Preston, uh, wanting the selectmen to uh, sponsor an article uh, prohibiting certain activities that took place during the beach a couple of Saturdays ago. Uh, I just, I just kind of wanted to bring that up simply because um, the law says we can only do what the state allows us to do and yeah. the state law says that what happened at the beach a couple of weeks ago was completely legal so therefore we have no authority whatsoever to enact an ordinance right. my understanding is that there's going to be a um, a bill put in the legislature to prohibit that activity and i hope when that when that bill goes in that it provides impetus for and grants the town's permission to enact ordinances so that just not on the beach, not on state property, but anywhere uh, in, the, in the town. Well, we'll <laughs> see what happens. Uh, if the if the authority is there, at least at least it will be something that we can work on. Um, I have received a letter from the State Department of Environmental Services. They are going to reissue our groundwater monitoring permit for the landfill. Uh, that's good news. Yeah. The bad news is that they have enlarged the area, which means that yeah. there will be four yeah. individuals who will have um items regarding that landfill put on their deeds yep. by law by federal and state law so that's going to be coming and we'll give special notice to those folks so they, so they know what's going on um, it appears that the port authority for some strange reason is about to reach an agreement to remove the boat known as the guest list or the uninvited guest as i referred to it from the marsh at the end of tuttle avenue um, I may go down and applaud myself as they get this done if they actually get it done, but I don't Just have. Just don't a, get on the boat. I don't. I don't have a lot of hope this is going to happen quite quickly. So, and that's it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I heard that the estimated amount of money to take it out of there is over thirty thousand dollars. So they probably aren't going to do it. It's it's quite expensive. <clears throat> yeah, thirty or thirty-five thousand. Mr. Bridal, other comments? Should uh, we send a letter to our senator and um, yes. a letter to our state reps? Uh, I was hoping the board the, would say that about the topless issue. Um, send it to them because obviously we can't do anything about it. They're the ones that have to do it to make enabling legislation so that we can do that. And I would encourage either our senator or our state reps to sponsor some sort of legislation so that makes it enabling legislation, enabling legislation, so that we are able to to. Uh, to do that in the town of Hampton. I'm, and I'm, I'm sure we're not the only town. I'm sure there's many other towns that are going to have this issue over the next months and stuff. So I would encourage that, that we send a letter to them requesting that they, they, uh, uh, they pursue this. 
I'd be more than happy to do that. And what I what I didn't mention was that since this is not a violation of state law, the state parks can't pass a regulation against it either, because it doesn't violate the law. So they can't make something violate the law the legislature hasn't made as a violation itself. So, so I'd be happy to send that up. The board directs me um, to do well, so. We'll poll all of the people as we go if they want to do a okay. letter or not. The other question, a quick question I had was. How long do utility companies have to take out telephone poles once they've replaced them? <laughs> it's been a um, road. a taxing issue uh, for 30 years or so. Can we tax them for having double poles? No, because they're not being used for carrying the lines. That's the problem. Uh, but we can um, request that they... Uh, I think that's something we should send a letter to them too. Diligence to do it. There's been some in town that have been there for five or more years. Yeah. That they've had a double pole, and people have that in the front of their houses and, yeah. and their property, and it's enough's enough. Okay. I'd be happy to do that. So we'll poll on that question also. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley. You think 50 years from now the legislature might tackle that proposal? It's possible. I have no problem with sending a letter. I'm not holding my breath on the results. Any other questions? I have other things, but not for the manager. Okay, report. and how did you, did you want him to um, I said I don't have any problem with sending the letter. Okay. I just don't have any great Which hopes. Which letter? There's two letters. What are the, what's the other letter? The About the... Polls. Oh, the poll's fine, no big deal. Yeah. But the, uh, the beach situation, uh, you know, don't hold your breath. I'm not going we to. We can write five or ten letters mm -hmm. for all the good it'll do. Mr. Bean. I have no questions on the manager's report regarding the um, ungodly event at the beach. Uh, there's two sides of that coin. If you uh, criminalize the activity, there's more press, then there's arrest, then you have to take these people uh, that do what they do uh, into your custody. Uh, they become a problem. The state police will not do it. It will be the town that does it. Yeah. The incident was uh, a grotesque failure. Uh, it's uh, dispiriting to uh, normal human beings at the beach. And I think if you criminalize it, you only serve their purpose. And I think if you ignore them, they go away. So that's my position. I think our legislators uh, from Hampton have much more pressing needs in terms of revenue, in terms of uh, rooms and meals, in terms of monetary stimulus to this town than to uh, uh, lower the bar to those knuckleheads that were at the beach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll take Waddell. both sides of the argument. Yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll agree with... Uh, with uh, Phil on, on if you ignore them, they go away, and if you criminalize it, it makes it worse. But I also will take the side of the argument that if we have prominent business people down at the beach, like Senator Preston, asking for our help, that we should do that, that we should respect their opinions, and sending a letter is fine. I would go along with sending the letter. Any other questions? Or but the report? Other report da, 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 no, you not right off the top. that boat. <laughs> a boating type. <laughs> oh, the boat? Yeah. Well, I think that's ridiculous. I, I, I don't. I have no clue why they just can't pull it out there and sink it. I mean, there's Talking so many places the they state. do that. I have no clue why they can't just burn it. I, I, it's foolishness. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. But yeah. that's that. One quick follow-up. I am given to understand by some members of the public that there are handsome men running around down at the beach without their shirts on. <laughs> and I don't know if you're going to ask Fred to include that in the... Uh... <laughs> well, they were also, I don't know if they were handsome, but walking around with bikinis and bikini bottoms on, too, the same day. Ah. Top and bottom. Uh, well, yeah. I would recommend you include that in the letter as well. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm with Mr. Bean because I think the, the more attention you pay to it, the worse it becomes. You're right. You're right. Well... Do whatever you think is suitable. Yeah. So it sounds like you have <laughs> consensus. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, moving on to old business, the Hampton Falls Fire Dispatch Agreement Renewal. Mr. Bridal. No, I think uh, we have the paperwork, and I think it all it needs now is your signature. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, I asked, I think it was last week, about the uh, restoring the ramp at the North uh, Beach Place Cove area for handicapped individuals. Well, this is on the uh, what? North Ham uh, Hampton Falls dispatch. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's what we're on. No, now. I thought you said at, oh, oh other. No, oh, okay, Hampton not on the Hampton Falls, Falls dispatch. That's fine. Renewal. That's fine. Mr. I thought we did Bean. that. I'm with Rusty. Mr. Waddell. I'm with Rusty and Phil. Is it we both in Rusty? So sign it. So yeah. sign it. <laughs> he needs to sign an official yeah. letter. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, now, uh, old business, uh, Mr. Bridal. I'm all set. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, uh, on the ramp at, um, and you said that we couldn't get the permits from the DES and whatever. I had a lengthy conversation with uh, Senator Stiles yesterday, and uh, one of the things uh, we discussed was the ramp, and she said she's going to try going to DES in our behalf and see if something can be done, because I said, you know, you said they ignore you and block you out every time you ask so maybe well, we asked we didn't file for a permit yeah what we did is we asked if we could renew it because the ramp mm -hmm. was there before and the answer was no which leads me to the only conclusion i have is that we need to spend money on engineering we need to have an in professional engineering plan drawn we need to go to uh, des we need to go to the army corps of engineers we need to do all kinds of federal and state permits or apply for them and then uh, go through conservation and planning Mm -hmm. uh, for the permits there and do public hearings, which costs a lot of money, particularly yeah. after you finish with the engineers. But I thought if she could help a little bit. Yeah, well, maybe. anything that anybody could do to help is a great idea. Yep. Maybe maybe we can get an Eagle Scout project to take that on, and it might be <coughs> easier for them to do it than if we did it. Might be. And that, that might be a way to go about it. You never know. And I'm sure they're always looking for good projects. So. They are. Any other old business? Nope. Nope. Just one, and it's not really old business, but uh, uh, was on the beach th uh, this afternoon on the boardwalk. There were some benches that were uh, vandalized, uh, they were thrown over the board, again. and there's some senior citizens that uh, really do enjoy sitting there and reading books, and if uh, we could make the appropriate request to the state down as we head towards the Boar's Head, there's two or three benches that okay, we have yes. a okay. were replaced, and yeah. they do really enjoy sitting there. Between and the members. memorial and, and... Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, I know exactly there's what you mean. two or three that were, I guess, misplaced or thrown over or something. But probably they're, thrown over. They do that there is a request to, there, and there's none there now so they'd like to have some back thank you Mr. we will make that request uh yes the day after last the uh, monday tuesday i went over to the the beach place cove and looked at that where the ramp had been and where the stairs are and it's absolutely ridiculous that there's not a ramp mm -hmm. and not a thing and thank you for mrs wosley for speaking to senator styles but i did that last week right after i went over there and looked at it and spoke with her and she said she also said she would look into it with des and try and get something done yeah. uh, because it <laughs> makes sense it would be such a simple procedure there is nothing there even to do hardly it's just uh, it could be done in half a day almost yep it's it's absolutely foolishness but it, and it should be done because people should have access to that beach people should have access to all the beaches um, so I did that also um, the other thing is I just wanted to repeat the um, that I went, attended another me meeting on the rooms, to, rooms and meals tax uh, that the senator is, is yeah. holding up there. And it's an interesting, interesting the way the state has this going now because they had a couple of smaller towns there. And the worry, and I can sympathize with them, is that they're going to lose money. Well, so what we're doing uh, is we're pitting towns against towns. Sure. Rather than saying to the state, maybe you should take less money the towns, all the towns should still get what they get, unless somebody, you know, because the state has taken the pension away, the pension uh, percentage away from us, they've taken this away from us and that away from us. So I think the, 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 the it will continue to go, and I think the, the, what we need to do is to work on getting that formula rewritten in a different manner so that we don't pit towns against towns, because if we pit towns against towns, it's not going to work. You're right. You've got too many other representatives who are going to vote against it. So, and I think the senator is doing a good job of trying to come up with a good formula and trying to get people to listen. That what I always get from every member up there as I go up representing Hampton is, you guys have three billion dollars in tax base. Your total tax base is three billion dollars. You know, the taxable yeah. in, uh, property. Yeah. It doesn't really matter, but that's what you get. And then if you start pitting towns against towns, it's not going to work. So hopefully we can work it out to a formula where mm -hmm. maybe the state takes a little bit bit less, huh. or it's a local enabling legislation the local uh, town can do something so it's interesting what's going on it is continuing and it will be a battle mm. but the center is doing a good job fighting it yeah they could choose to live in hampton they don't have to live up there 
That's true. Well, right. that's true, but they do live up there, <laughs> and we're going to have to we're going to have to make it work. That's the important thing. My suggestion would be that you take a look at the town of Moultonboro, which I believe has a three billion dollar tax base uh -huh. oh, and yeah. contributes very little in rooms and meals yeah. taxes, yeah. but gets an awful lot of money <clears throat> back. Yeah. How many people live in Moultonboro? Not many. Just the rich ones. Just the rich. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just the rich ones. <laughs> Moving on to new business, acceptance of the Environmental Champion Award for the WWTP for $1,000. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, this is a, uh, an award given by Aquarium Water Company. Uh, they recognize the, uh, the great job that Public Works is doing in the uh, wastewater area. And as you know, we've received several awards in, in that, uh, state awards in that area, as well as some national recognition through uh, EPA. And we have been uh, designated as one of their uh, champions in, in uh, the environmental area. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they have given us a, a check for $1,000, which uh, we've received and uh, the board needs to accept. That's why it's on the agenda and that those funds would go to the uh, general fund. Okay. Also move that we a accept. Statute. A second. All those in favor, unanimous. Number two is approval of recommendations for <coughs> budget committee subcommittee protocol. Do you want to open that, Mrs. Wolseley? Well, this, I have a lot of small things that I'd like to go through really quickly before we get to talking about that, but it's your, your call. That's why I asked. If you want okay. Um, I'd like to listen to the opinions of the rest of the board before I make a comment. <clears throat> so you don't want to I don't intend to approve that. Comments. I want to I want to listen to the opinions of the okay, rest. Do you have any comments Mr. Bean? I, oh, Mr. Bean. Good. Uh I do is that uh this is uh been an established uh communication issue. This board has unanimously approved it in uh prior session. And it's about uh professional lines of communication with the $26 million corporation with first responders that never get a break from surge operations in winter and summer. And uh, as we just heard at the uh, wastewater treatment, uh, real time, real challenge, uh, treating millions and millions and millions of gallons a day of uh, effluent mm -hmm. that comes out with uh, EPA five star beaches. And to have subcommittees, uh, to have uh, random meetings and, and demanding time of our department heads uh, is challenging and it's an encumbersome and I think that we were spot on. Uh, Mrs. Wolsey was the representative to the budget committee. She stepped down from that. I volunteered to serve as that. I made the board's position clear to the budget committee at my first uh, meeting last summer and said nothing more than what the board had already approved. I think uh, to do it any other way flies in the face of good solid business practice flies in the way of operational efficiency and I think it challenges our department heads and I don't think it serves the public thank you mr. Wardell <clears throat> uh, yeah I mean I, I would love to see the the relationship between the budget committee and the board of selectmen a little more agreeable I think that the budget committee has the right to to, to question on budget matters and everything but I think it's the Board of Selectmen's uh, <coughs> purview to be in charge of what goes on in the town. I think that I think this this that has been the uh, this uh, outline that's been presented is a good outline. I think it's a good way of doing it. I think the questions should be submitted in advance. I think it should be with the department heads, not with the individual employees, and. Uh, I think it should be scheduled. It should go through a, a chain of command. I think that's that's the way you do things in business. That's the way you do things in most situations. And so I, I agree with this. I think it's I think they have every right to know what's going on. I think they have every right to talk with department heads, but I don't necessarily think that they need to get into the minutia or the minute things that are going on in each department and uh, going into specifically what kinds of. Uh, software department might be using or what kinds of uh, material a, a department might be using we hire people to make those decisions so I can go along with this very well 
Mr. Bridal. I have no problem with this as presented. I think we have, uh, over the past year, we've, we've had a bunch of changes in our department heads. We've allowed, uh, uh, we've got some good people in there. We need to allow them to let them run their departments. If the budget committee has any questions, um, they they should be run through the department head, not not through the entire department, um, and, and let the worker bees that are out there do their jobs and work. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Wolsey. I don't recall voting on this. We just got this. This is dated last week, 25th. And I know we have discussed this somewhat. Um, memo is to the Board of Selectmen. Request from Budget Committee Chairperson. Chairman, please. And uh, dear members of the Board, I have received the attached request from the Chairman of the Budget Committee and in accordance with my understanding, I am referring the request to the Board of Selectmen through your Budget Committee representative with my recommendations as shown below. So these are recommendations from the manager to us, which is fine. But uh, harking to what Jim has mentioned, uh, a conciliatory approach to working with the Budget Committee does not appear to be in the cards, having read this. And these are only recommendations from the manager. I think the context of the remarks in the memo are arrogant and illegal. It assumes that the Board of Selectmen can exercise authority over an elected budget committee. I refer you to RSA 32 colon 16 Roman 2 duties and authority of budget committee, quote, to confer with the governing body and with other officers, department heads, and other officials rel relative to estimated costs, revenues anticipated, and services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the budget committee. It shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons to furnish such pertinent information to the budget committee." End quote. We have absolutely no authority to tell the budget committee who they can call before it, what whether they take minutes or post minutes, they are subject to RSA 91A, just as we are. If they're not posting their minutes, <coughs> if they're not posting agendas, that's their problem, they're responsible, and they are bound by 91A just as we are. I think it's insulting to tell them what we think they should be doing. It's none of our business. Number four, the subcommittee meeting as scheduled will be attended only by the department head. Departmental personnel employees will not be in attendance. Hello, to confer with the governing body and with other officers, department heads, and other officials relative to estimated costs, etc. The budget committee can call in the janitor from the police department if they choose. They can call in anyone per the statute. Number five, Public participation will not be allowed by the subcommittee. Who the devil are we to tell the municipal budget committee that their, su their, their subcommittee cannot allow public participation? They probably wouldn't, but it's none of our business. There's no stipulation in the statutes as to the functioning of the budget committee. If you read RSA 32, and I have read RSA 32 for many years due to my experience, it doesn't tell them how many meetings to have. It doesn't tell them what topics there should be. All it tells them is to get the job done, abide by the RSA 32 colon 16 Roman 2, and it gives deadlines for when their reports have to be submitted. They have to have their reports, they have to have their budget, figures completed by certain <coughs> dates to coincide with the deliberative sessions and the elections and all that stuff. Um, I think this is extremely offensive. I think we have no right to interfere with the Budget Committee. 
Uh, I noticed that the apparently the uh, chairman of the budget committee submitted a request for some figures on conservation uh, at the end of last week. And uh, supposedly, uh, there's not been any response to her request yet, but I understand that information was sent to Mr. Bean. I, and, he, and he is the representative. But the representative to any committee needs to communicate with us. Uh, I hope. Me, just for a second, just a, for a point yeah. of order, uh, I was not included in the initial request. Well, I, I had understood that there was well, information provided to you. I'm just telling you that that's you. what you said is incorrect. But any, any representative, and that includes the precinct commissioners, the school board members, is a facilitator and is there to provide communication between whatever committee they're sitting on and this committee. Um, I, I have a problem as one member of this board with not being notified, I think, uh, at all or in a timely fashion. For example, the fire department promotions. I don't hear anything about that. Yeah, or that's no, not what we're no, talking Well, about. yes, we are, because we're but talking about communication. But let me get to the Let me get to the Please finish your Let me get to the bottom. Uh, we have we we have the right to demand uh, full disclosure of any issues relating to the board, but I think it's up to us to keep our nose out of the business of the Municipal Budget Committee. The taxpayers in their wisdom in 1954 voted to come under the Municipal Budget Act. This is a legally constituted committee. It is not an advisory committee. I strongly advise this board to keep our fingers out of the operation of the Budget Committee. They will stand or fall on their own. We will provide them as they must, as we must by law, any information they require. They'll run their subcommittees however they run them. And uh, they have had subcommittees in the past. And the onus is on them. If they don't do their job right, let them stand up and take the punishment. Okay, but I think, I think this we is got not, your point, this and is let's not give someone else business. a chance to talk. Not our Mr. business. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman. Would you like to respond to some of the, what she said? Well, the Municipal Budget Committee has the right to appoint subcommittees. They have the right to do any of that because they are a legally constituted board or commission under the general laws of the state. However, Sorry. they Sorry. don't have the, the power to bring employees in and question them. This is not the Hoover Commission. This is not the uh, uh, the uh, um, the McCarthy hearings. This is this is the Budget Committee, and it specifically excludes employees in the definition. So, and that's one of the reasons we wanted it excluded because we had a previous committee formed by the selectmen where members of the Budget Committee were present, and those employees, because they felt so insulted, get up and left, and that committee was dissolved and they have to deal with the very issue that we're talking about here. Um, I don't care if there's a subcommittee. That doesn't bother me. But they need to follow the rules, and I'm going to be right up front and very candid. If they don't post a notice, the employees won't show up, department head or otherwise, because it's not a lawful meeting. And I won't hesitate at all to go to the county attorney if that's going to be the case and we're going to put pressure on here. This needs to be done properly, and so far it hasn't been done properly. We have demands, 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 and we don't have anything but demands. We're trying to, trying to set a basis upon which everybody can operate on a flat surface because the law says that's the way it's supposed to be. And uh, if, if this board appoints a committee and they decide to hold a meeting, then that meeting has to be noticed. It has to be posted. It has to be conducted in accordance with the law. I Minutes mean, have to be taken. They have to be posted once they're taken. And they have to be accepted by some manner whether it's by the subcommittee, and I would assume it would be, and then finally by the budget committee itself or by the selectmen, depending on, on how the selectmen feel about the committee they appoint. There's nothing here that violates the statute. Absolutely nothing. I helped write it. I think I have a pretty good idea of what, what, what the statute does. The budget committee is not the Hoover Commission. They do not have unlimited and un, unfretted power to do anything they want. They have the right to look at the expenditures of the town, which is we are anxious to give them. But we're anxious to give them in a setting that's neutral to them and neutral to us. 
that isn't done by some public participation. This is a schedule of the Budget Committee. And I was told by the Chairman very emphatically, it's a meeting strictly between the Budget Committee subcommittee and the department heads, okay. or whoever the selectmen select. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize here. I'm not trying to go beyond that. That's what I was told. That's what I put in. And I have to bring some sort of a recommendation forward to the Board of Selectmen. This complies with the statute. And I will tell you again, that if the, uh, any committee, it doesn't matter who it is, if they want to have our em employees, our department heads attend that meeting and answer questions or, or pose questions to them, I think that should be in advance so we know what we're all talking about. Um, the Budget Committee has already said that, that they would do that with written questions, which they gave to our department heads prior to the meetings. Uh, the reason we put 10 days in here was because of a general discussion with the department heads. They were getting some of those questions hours before the meeting, and some of them involved great detailed research in order to get the correct answers. We want those answers out there. We want the Budget Committee to have the right answers. So 10 days is not an unreasonable period of time in which to research and get the proper answers and give those, ne if necessary, in writing, if that's the way it needs to be, but not with employees. We're not going to go back to that problem. Um, they need to just do what the law requires. That's all we're asking. And we need to do what they ask, provided it complies with the law. Uh, I think it's you. as simple as that. Thank you. Mr. Wardell. Yeah, you know, I mean, Selectman Wolseley has the uh, absolute truth, which must be very nice, but RSAs are always interpreted, and they're interpreted in many different ways. So, you know, I, I don't find this offensive. I don't find it offensive at all. I, I find it some recommendations here recommendations that we can follow that will make a more orderly process. We, do, we don't, as selectmen, call individual employees in here to discuss the, the, the daily operations of it. It's not our place. We have department heads to do that. We have department heads that make budgets, that discuss budgets, that can discuss budgets with the budget committee, that can discuss budgets with the selectmen. If you're going to run an orderly operation, you got to have some recommendations. You got to have some kind of an outline, and that's what I say. Mr. No, as I said before, I, I'm fine with this. I think that if uh, if if a department head has the questions, and if he feels it's necessary, he may bring in one of his deputy director or deputy chief or whatever it is who might have a better knowledge on it, and and so, but that should be his decision, not. Not somebody saying, I want this person, this person, and this person there. It should be up to the department head on who he brings to answer the questions. So, thank you. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm going with what Mr. Welch suggests. He gets paid the big bucks, and I'm <laughs> sure that he does a good job, and I'm going to follow his advice. May I Mrs. Wolseley, would you like to talk? May I have the statutory reference, Fred, <laughs> regarding the employees? If you, you just read it. There wasn't a word in there about employees. Department heads, yes. And other officials. An employee is not an official. They has no authority whatsoever except to perform the job he's assigned to perform. And then it says it shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons. Well, then, then I suppose what we should do is we should start subpoenaing citizens off the street to find out what their position is. It's specific. It's department heads and people <coughs> in charge that have authority to make decisions, and that's that's really what the budget committee is after. How, why did you make that decision? What was the basis of it, and what's it going to cost? And and that an employee doesn't have knowledge of. I'm just puzzled because I think, and in line with what Mr. Waddell has been saying, Municipal Budget Act has been in in effect in this community for 61 years. Uh, I served as chairman of the budget committee for a number of years, and as selectman representative to the budget committee for eight years, and. I have never seen a problem like this before. There have been subcommittees before. There has never been this level of structuring. Uh, I, I don't know how we've arrived at our current destination, but I'm really puzzled at why we're all tangled up in this to Ma Mr. Chairman, I, I, I am the person, um, if I can help alleviate some of uh, Mrs. Wolsey's puzzlement, uh, that accepted the responsibility of being the liaison to the committee, she quit. Let me say that again. I work for a living. I have grandchildren. I have children. I have a life. And Miss Wolsey quit 
the post. And I accepted the responsibility. Now, from the grandstand, she's concerned. We have done nothing more here through Mr. Welch's correspondence and his outline and structure of communications than to free up information and to formalize and make more transparent and make more readily available the quality of the information, the preparedness of our department heads, and the preparation and information that's granted to the Budget Committee. Just as people have the right to go down and do what they did a couple of days ago or last weekend at the beach, everyone has rights. Everyone can assert their rights under the law. But then, at the end of the day, we're running a very important corporation. And if we all assert our rights and what we're entitled to do and what we can do to who, with who, when we want, whenever we want, pandemonium breaks out and we become very ineffective. These lines of communication that we have established are the standard operating procedures for first responder organizations, a very important gun club that I used to belong to, a very important boat club that I used to belong to, a very important first responder outfit that Rusty used to belong to, a very important education platform that Mr. Waddell dedicated his life to, a very important series of government posts that Mr. Welch has served in, in your business practice, in your esteemed decades of service in this town. So there really is no problem. The information is, is free-flowing. The Budget Committee is served better by this, and our townspeople are served better by this. There is no offense. There is no problem. And this is strictly professional-grade staff communications. Thank you. Okay. We started with you, didn't we? I'm set. Oh, you're set. Okay. Well, we're going to move on to closing comments. There's no and motion on the table, oh, is there? Wait a minute. I'm sorry. We do need a motion. I am so sorry. moved. So moved and I'll a second. second. All those in favor and I'm against, opposed. four to one. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on to closing comments whoop, 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 whoop. or other new business. I'm sorry. Okay. You, you sound like you must have something good. I what have would a you like list, to talk about? A little list. We'll start with um, you. I've mentioned that in this wonderful state, um, apparently picks up the waste from other uh, state parks, but has not been doing that for Hampton. I know Mr. Bean has been very concerned over the years, and I share his concern about what the state is not doing for the town of Hampton. Uh, Nancy told me yesterday, Fred, that apparently uh, you can find, I asked the NHMA, but they couldn't seem to get it, no. that there's a manager's site that you have the ability to go on and you should be able to determine what state parks, I think there are 32 state parks and historic sites, see what state parks, uh, have, in what towns where state parks located. are located, right. yep. uh, is the state disposing of the waste or is the state expecting the town to assist them in disposing of the waste. I think it would help because when we get to budget discussions, I'm going to seriously ask if we can consider to ask the state to no longer deposit their waste through the town of Hampton. We can certainly ask. I can tell you that the one town I'm familiar with where I was a selectman in New Hampshire, uh, the state insisted that the town take care of all the trash. And in fact, when the facility was closed, they brought it up, opened the facility, and put it in the facility without the town's permission. Uh, so, I mean, oh. there are times when they're brazen, and there are times when they're friendly. I Just depends back on to the, the situation. Beach waste. Remember the beach um, rakings? Yes. It's, it's up, yeah. But not to bore you further. Um, so, if you don't mind, if you have a minute to No, I'll be happy that. to do that. May we have, please, an updated phone contact list and an updated employee list? Because we've had a number of changes being made recently. Not drop everything on the floor, but in a reasonable time frame, I would appreciate having updated no, lists. I'll ask the departments for their normal lists. Okay. And I've had a complaint on Boston Avenue and in that, that area about construction noise. Apparently, there's been something being constructed. I don't dare go down near there because I'd get stuck in the traffic forever. But I understand there's construction going, and the neighbors in the area are going crazy because, you know, come and rent from us yeah. for your wonderful summer vacation. And they said the noise and the, and the uproar has been terrible. I don't know if there's anything we can do about it, but I just want you to know that I am getting complaints there. Okay. They should. Let me, let me just say, 
because I think it's important. If if people have a complaint with regards to noise and, and take a look at the ordinance, it's mm -hmm. on the line. It's online. Mm -hmm. If the, the, that noise occurs other than during the permitted hours, they should mm -hmm. call the police department immediately. Right. Because the police will go down and shut it down. That's their, that's their function. If it's during permitted hours, there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Stuck. We're yeah. stuck with it. Yeah. That's sad because I, I it felt can be badly for them. Um, I, you gave us a copy of the cable contract, current contract? Yes, ma'am. I have never been so bored in my entire life. You should have been around for the seven years it took to read it. God bless us all. Um, because mm. I think I was all, <laughs> I don't know what to think when I got done reading it. I'll try reading it again, but I have no idea how much use I will be in making suggestions for what we do because that's a... That's an awful exercise to go through. It is. Uh, Aquarian's award check, you said general fund. By law, it has to go to the general fund. Okay. And I have to say that the reason that Senator Stiles and I were talking yesterday was because I called her after reading the Seacoast Sunday. Did it, any of you guys read that? No, I didn't see Prison it. Prison offices in dire need of help. The New Hampshire Department of Corrections announced it's desperate for workers to manage records, do basic computer work, and answer telephones at its headquarters in Concord, as well as at the state prison for men. The pay being offered by the state to work in corrections department offices is zero. It's not ideal, said Jeff Lyons, spokesman for the state corrections department. Obviously, we'd prefer to have fully certified paid staff in these jobs, but we'd have to have more money in the budget. I said, Nancy, what is being done with the money in Concord? Where in the name of God is the money going up there? It's not going to God. Because Nancy has been helpful, and I, I know Fred realizes this, with talking to the state and DOT and so forth about the sidewalks. And I said to Nancy, I can see in my crystal ball that a couple of years from now, the state will not only say, we own all these sidewalks in the state of New Hampshire, they will then say, we own these roads in New Hampshire and we're not going to maintain them either. What? on earth and you're banging your head up there Jim but what on earth are they doing up there with the money well I, su I suggested in my meeting with the Department of Transportation that in fact they give us Route 1A as a compact road not till after they've done the well, drainage the, so Rick isn't floating the away reason, the reason I said that yeah. was because the state law says and the Supreme Court has ruled that if they give the road to the town, they have to completely rebuild it at their expense to state specifications. In your dreams. Well, but that's the law. And, and uh, we don't have to accept it if they don't do it. So they're spending the money in things other than where they need to be spent. I mean, that, I, that is one of the most... <laughs> we have more committees in the Congress. Well, that. they're going to have to spend some more money because they've got El Chapo's cousin in jail up there for 16 years. Oh, that's that's going to be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I just like somebody to tell me where the money is on. Upset. The only question I had was was for the manager and uh, sir. What was that letter from Mr. Davis? Oh yes. The uh, 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 dead end signs. Yes. I have inquired of Public Works, and my suggestion was instead of just putting two dead end signs up, yeah. that we put a sign underneath it, no turnaround. Oh, good, good. Okay. Because just putting a dead end sign up, people feel they can drive down the road and they can turn around anywhere. Right. So, but if you put a sign up saying no turnaround at the end of the road, they okay. have a problem. Yeah. So that sounds. So, yeah, I, that was our solution to it. Yeah. So. That sounds like a great oh, solution. So. Mr. Chairman, one more Thank quick you. point. I had to go to Stratum today, so I was on the Exeter Road since we discussed the problems nope. last week. Join nice you. job at least showing where the center line will be and the cones on the side. Right. I was a little horrified when I was coming back on the south side of the road because a lot of the, um, the driveway hookups had been accomplished, you know, the, the paving at the end of the driveway where everything was chewed up. But those driveways on the south side, 
they they get pretty severe angles. They always Sound have like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Other comments, Mr. Um, but nice job, Dean, no, Mr. Waddell. Fine. Oh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Oh, thank I you, know sir. We closing comments. I would just like to poll the board here because it's been two years now. We've had all the same members of this board. Everybody's got to learn a little uh, of how things work, and I think by now everyone's feeling very comfortable. Uh, Mr. Waddell, are you comfortable with the way the board, with what's happening here at the Board of Selectmen? Yes. Mr. Bridal? Absolutely. And Mrs. Wolseley? I'd like to see better communication. I understand 91A, but I think even if I got a, a message, uh, have Christina call and say, hey, uh, fire department is promoting so-and-so next Monday night, or just, just to say, or send an email saying, do not respond, but we're doing this. So are you happy with the direction of the board? Well, I'm, I would be happier if I felt better informed. And Mr. Bean. Mr. Chairman, I have served uh, on what is now your board. This is my fourth year, and uh, during my tenure, however brief it is, it's never run better. And thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Well, I only question because I, I've seen uh, a lot of cooperation, and you know, there are times when there seems to be that there aren't as much cooperation. You know, particularly here at the. Uh, Budget committee, but to be truthful, I don't really see anything new with what's happening at the budget committee. These problems have been uh, seem to be insurmountable ever since I've been here for 12 years, and I'm very comfortable with the way the direction of the board is going. So thank you. And a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. What time. At 8:30. 8:30. 8 Second. All those Good in time. favor, unanimous. All right. Have a good one, guys. Oh, resting.